Hi, friends. It's Sara, the fat culture critic. So um, I often end up with topics here that are a bit, well, heavy, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, but I wanted to do a sort of quick video that's a bit more positive. So I wanted to um, have a bit of a roundup of fat representation from 2022 that's not <laughs> So this is sort of fair to middling. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm, there's not really a particular order. Um, I'm just going to talk about ones that stood out to me as being, uh, you know, fat experience or related to a fat experience, um, that we saw, you know, in film and TV that I saw. There's a bunch of films I haven't seen yet on, on film and TV, um, in in 2022 and yes i know i should have had this video out earlier in the month but i blame adhd 2022 not total <laughs> fat representation so first of all one series that ended this year was this is us which one of the main characters kate was a larger fat woman I have complicated feelings around this show. It was, for one, I love Kate, and it was great to see someone who's more like me on screen and treated as a main character. But there was also some use of fat suits throughout that show. Uh, there were some times where I, where I can see there kind of wasn't another way of doing it. You know, they had cast particular people to play the younger versions. And their bodies developed how they developed. So it was a choice of continuously recasting or doing some prosthetics. And I think, you know, probably they made the better choice. So, yeah, I just wish they hadn't used fat suits for um, Toby. Uh, on the actor Chris Sullivan, who's great as Toby. Um, but I wish they hadn't used fat suits on him. Uh, but such as it is. Anyway. Um, yeah, my, my main issue, uh, although, like, I think it was a lot about the show and the treatment of Kate, uh, Kate was, was very good. Um, it does kind of fall into the trap of making fatness about trauma, which in this story makes sense because a lot of things are centered on trauma, but has the downside of there's the single story issue um, that so many of our stories about fatness are about um, it being related to trauma and sadness. So uh, it's one of those, it's a really good story in a vacuum, but in the larger context, it's a shame that this is the only kind of story about fatness that's get told. Um, also, it was really hard, like seeing some of the reception that her character got. After every story that was related to her, there would be tons of people on Twitter talking about how much they hated her and how much her character hadn't changed or grown or evolved, even though the character, I think, does go through a whole, like, there's a whole evolution of a relationship in there from start to finish that I think is really well done. I think for me, like, one of the highlights, um, was an episode this year um, called The Hill, where, you know, they confronted head on some of the issues in the relationship where he had lost weight and she hadn't. Um, and she was missing his old self, and it was treated as if she was missing the weight when I think what the text was trying to say was that she was missing the person who used to have time for her and listen to her. But the reaction online was so hostile. It was seen as, like, everything he's done to better himself. But a lot of it was just centered on, you know, they perceived that because he, the character had lost weight. And the character had lost weight because they stopped using the fat suit. So, that's complicated. Anyway, um, let me know if you want me to do, like, a video about this is us. My feelings on Kate. Um, but, yeah. It was a representation of a fat person that had some real input from Chrissy Metz into some of the writing and 
I really appreciated that we started the story with a fat person, we ended the story with a fat person. And you know, the story the changes were about how she lived her life, not about how her body was shaped. And I wish we'd gotten more of her perspective of what it was like to be in a fat body, but they did manage to get it in there some over the years. So, yeah. A portrayal of a fat person that wasn't crap. <laughs> uh, in a similar kind of genre of the whole sort of prestige drama thing, um, Grey's Anatomy um, this year addressed medical fat phobia. Um, there was an episode, season 18, episode 10, where there was a patient who is a mid fat, like, you know, uh, you know, in, in definitely in the sort of fat, but not super fat kind of range, um, who was presenting with, um, pain and the, uh, orthopedic surgeon, um, dismisses it as she needs to lose weight. And despite the fat intern insisting that he should pay attention and um, the sur Luke, the surgeon, is dismissive until he sees um, or Lincoln, the surgeon, is dismissive until he sees her walking and realizes there is an actual problem. Um, and it's, you know, I give it sort of a C. <laughs> it's, it's good for the, them to address it. It's good for the fat character um, intern um, for us to point it out. But in pointing it out, he's talked about it as obesity being a disease. We got the frame, we still got the obesity as disease framework, which our bodies are not a disease. Um, you know, it, I don't like that framework. It's not a helpful narrative. Um, but at least they were addressing medical fat phobia to a degree. Um, <laughs> the the guy says it's not as easy for us for people to for us to, some people to lose weight as it is for you. For most people, it's it's not possible. But you know. For something coming out of Hollywood, for a medical drama, eh, it was better than shit. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll call that a C. Some other sort of um, mainstream culture things. Um, in the Marvel Universe, we got some more Wong showing up as everybody's favorite funny fat friend. Um, love to see him. Could somebody give him a plot, please? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's also on the sort of, I'll give it a C. <laughs> it's not because everybody likes him, but uh, we could use more than the funny fat friend. In the neighborhood of multiverses stuff, everything, everywhere, all at once. One of the best movies I have ever seen. Uh, just all around awesome. Um, and... We got Jamie Lee Curtis because she insisted on not having to do the whole tone up, but just like have her body be her body. Um, so we got like a uh, sort of small, fat, medium, you know, mid sized, average, average American woman. <laughs> um, uh, presented on, uh, on screen, you know, the, Somebody who who has who has a belly and yeah, that is more normal body representation than fat representation. But considering it's Hollywood, we'll take it. Yeah, that body that that film is just you know human bodies as, as they are, and that's a really good thing to see. Uh, sticking with films, um, I want to talk about. Fire Island and Bros. I'm putting them both in the same thing because we got the same kind of fat representation from both, which is we got fat 
characters, gay fat characters who are not treated as asexual or a joke. They're that they, we we got confirmation that they bone and that is where the bar is that I'm celebrating that. <laughs> Uh, I love Fire Island. I wanted to like Rose more than I did. I, I actually think it would have been really interesting had the main character been fat because he was so concerned about his body being not up to whatever standard, but then he's just like an ordinary, you know, standard Hollywood, standard actor body. <laughs> so, like, it, it would have been more interesting to have the insecurity come from, like, a more represented place. So I think that could have been interesting. But we are talking about what we actually saw on screen, not what we uh, wish we saw on screen. So, yeah. Um, Fire Island, we get acknowledgement that the... I can't remember his name in the film because I'm just thinking about him as the Mary Bennett. <laughs> We get textual acknowledgement that he has been having fun. And in Bros, we get confirmation that we see that Henry dates and has partners. And I think is being invited into the uh, orgy. So yeah, we, we, get, we get fat gay characters who are not desexualized. That is where the bar is. <laughs> it would be great if we could raise it, but yeah fat representation that isn't since we're on the subject of queerness let's talk about our flag mean stats which had several fat characters some of whom actually got were, were pre presented as lovable and lovable. so yay <laughs> this is this is an a plus we got yeah lovable um and you know attractive um, <laughs> characters um of size but we also bad with the good we we got a bunch of um fat phobic stupid jokes in the first episode that were stupid and unnecessary and yes i know they were being said by the bad guys but we didn't need them there like we, like for the love of god Find other things to show that your character is a bully than making fat phobic jokes. If it's not relevant to the character and not relevant to the plot, because it like just are making us have to deal with that. And I almost never get to watch stuff that doesn't in some way throw in some anti fat bias. Just, you know, like to be able. To escape that for a bit. And there was no need to have it whatsoever. Um, yeah. Absolutely none. It did nothing for the characters. It did nothing for the plot. It was just Taika Waititi throwing in some fat jokes. Please don't. So mixed on our flag means death. Then like overall it's terrific. And really loved it. But I just wish. That one bit had been removed. Talking about another kind of queerness that got everything right. Let's talk about a league of their own. Because, damn, this was so good on so many, many, many levels. I absolutely, unequivocally loved every second of it. We once again got fat characters that are presented as lovable and likable. Both Joe and Clancy. Um, and uh, I, would, I could tell you from the first episode, I would die for Clancy. <laughs> she may be one of my favorite characters uh, I saw all year. Joe is awesome too. And we got another delightful cameo later on that I will not spoil for anyone. But yeah, we 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 got you know, um, got some really fat fat characters being presented as lovable, fat not being seen as an impediment to uh, sport. Um, yeah, 
that just A plus 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 you have my heart. <laughs> and and it's just so 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 queer on every level. Yeah, just can't wait for season two. More, more, more of this, please. And I'm gonna finish with a couple Christmassy ones. So Spirited, which I expected to be a bit of Christmassy Hollywood fluff, was actually, you know, quite good in a lot of ways. And one of the things that I really appreciated was that Octavia Spencer's character is the love interest. You know, a middle aged, um, dark skinned fat woman being treated as the object of the one of the main characters affection um and also integral to with agency integral to the plot um and just like she's just framed as a love interest it's not treated in any way odd that um you know he happens to love someone who is a very, very beautiful woman. Octavia Spencer is a very beautiful woman, but not in the way, in the mold that Hollywood usually treats, you know, describes as, this is, this is the sort of role that usually goes to like an Amy Adams. And Octavia Spencer is being framed exactly the way that they would have framed an Amy Adams. And it was quite, it was refreshing actually. To just like, this is, just normal for, you know, a middle-aged, larger woman to be. Why wouldn't she be someone's dream girl? And I like that. Another film that has a bit of a Christmas element is Spoiler Alert, which by the, is, is just an atrocious title. <laughs> but uh, one of the things I loved most this year... Um, it's it's not really a it's not the, the story exactly of a fat person but an integral part of the main character is that he is a former fat kid and we see his we see like his flashbacks to his imag sort of his reimagine of his past and and there is a, a it's a fat child actor playing him um, and I think we, we don't talk enough about how the experience of a former fat kid is, is a fat person experience. Um, you know, usually it, if this does come up, it's treated as an, a place for, for jokes. Um, but here it wasn't. Um, so spoiler alert is um, a really lovely... Um, sad story um it's uh it's the real it's based on the true story on the memoir of um the, of the writer talking about his relationship with his partner who died it, it is strange that i want if it, it, it is in essence a barrier gaze and yet it's also not uh that's the whole thing with a spoiler alert is the very bad title. It tells you from the beginning that, that he's going to die. So it's not the sort of surprise that barrier gay is. And it's also not. Uh, it's not about the death. So it's not like it's not trauma exploitation. Um, it's just a very honest human story of a relationship. Um, and. That includes, you know, grief and trauma and healing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really quite lovely. And the, the, the fat element is that, that he is um, a former, you know, as he, de he describes it himself as a former fat kid. And this informs part of his identity and a part of his experience. And is, a, is a source of vulnerability that is presented in film not as a joke but just as an honest you know someone with anxieties about their body because of an experience of fatness and the thing you know 
Yeah, it's the natural way in which trauma comes up and you deal with it life um and i really appreciated it and i know some folks whose experience is this form of fat kid who don't become like the way we talk about certain former fats who are the worst <laughs> but so but you know there are people who experience fatness as a kid and then uh their body changed in puberty or in some cases in second puberty like people who transition um and because of hormone changes, they do lose the weight. Um, and so they have an experience of life at a young age as being fat. Um, and that informs part of who they are and certain anxieties about themselves. And it's, you know, it is an experience when we talk about, you know, the experiences of fatness, because it's not a single experience, it's multiple kinds of experience. And that is one of them. And I thought that they did a great job of presenting it in this film. So that's it for, for fiction and, well, uh, based on nonfiction. Um, now I get to tell you about my favorite bit of fat representation all year, which was nonfiction, which was reality TV. This, this year's Canada's Drag Race, Canada versus the World, which is an ungodly ridiculous title. But anyway, the version of RuPaul's Drag Race that we have in Canada. And some of the world ones have been doing these versus the world ones. If you're not familiar with the franchise, it's, um, it's drag queens who compete in various challenges. And um, the versus the worlds are some of the favorites from the previous iterations of the franchise. And, uh, you know, there's a sort of competition, but it's, quite good natured like the fandom can be toxic and awful but uh the show itself can often be can be really good it depends it depends on the editing anyway drag is one of the few art forms where fat people are embraced at least to a degree and in in this uh drag race versus just the world that it uh um thing we we got some returning queens uh who are queens of size um one of whom is um one of one of whom was victoria scone uh who is from britain who is the first um uh cis woman drag queen um to compete in the franchise we've had one afab person before uh but they were um trans man and there's been a number of um trans women and non-binary people in the franchise but this is the first time uh someone who is a woman was competing so yeah victoria scone uh who's queen of the sapphix uh including me <laughs> she's <laughs> this is a lovely uh a very very talented woman and we also had silky nutmeg ganache who is an american um amab um i'm not sure if they're may if they're a man or, or non-binary um but they're uh anyway silky um and uh i have actually struggled with um silky before um i think like some of the way that she was framed in previous versions of drag race um I, I, you know, maybe part of that is some internalized pick me of, of fatness because I've struggled with how much of her comedy was often about food. And that's what made RuPaul laugh. But this particular iteration of this show doesn't have RuPaul, and there was significantly less, it felt like, um, thin gays. Um, a gaze with a Z. There were plenty of thin gays. <laughs> uh, anyway, so having these two um, compete together, uh, you know, as much as against each other, but there's a developing sisterhood um, was one of the most, um, one of the best fat representation experiences 
for me to watch. Uh, these two developed a friendship and a bit of a showmance. Um, and there was a scene where these two with a very different experiences, obviously, because, you know, a black American AMAB person um, and a white English AFAB person. Um, and, like, there's just so many other intersections in which they're different, but talking about some of their shared experiences of fatness, and there's a particular scene they talk about, you know, prejudice from casting agencies and stuff. And it was just them sharing their, their thoughts was special. And uh, Silky talking about how she loves her body and sees the beauty in her body just hit me um, in a very special way. And these two, you know, seeing each other and talking to each other and sharing space together was just kind of amazing. I have a big body, and I have no shame in that. It took me a long time to actually learn to love myself. Only really recently in the last couple of years have I been able to really actually love my body, and I can sit here and say that I do not care and that I love my body. I, I love myself, you know. And so that to me was the best fat representation of 2022. Do you notice something about all the others that I listed? Because most of them didn't really have more than one fat character. Our Flag Means Death does, and A League of Our Own does. But even in those, they weren't really interacting with each other. I remember one of my favorite film profs, uh, who's a trans man, talking about how um, moved he was seeing the first time he saw a documentary that had trans people in community with each other. And his, he developed a theory about how, like, the best representation is, is when you get people who are talk to each other. People of the same experience talking to each other. Um, and to, to get away from always seeing it through the outsider's lens. You know, to have people see each other. And... That's what I found um, in that episode of Drag Race. That's what we don't get a lot of in fat representation. And it's what I challenge any filmmakers out there to try and do more of. Um, because, yeah, that was the best fat So there we are. That is my roundup of not too great. Um... <laughs> in terms of fat representation in 2022. Um, let's see how 2023 pans. As always, if you want to support me, you can join my Patreon or you can give me a tip on uh, YouTube or um, and PayPal. And um, just, you know, do the whole, like, you share and subscribe. You, you know YouTube. You've done YouTube before. Um, so, yeah. And uh, I've been the Fat Culture Critic, and uh, later.